Okay, my friends, this is just bizarre. I just got done going through a rant about how they could, they don't understand even what's going on with the corona of the sun. I, it's fully, it's so simple to understand, it's unbelievable. And then all of a sudden this pops up. Alphavin waves, the hidden force superheating the sun's corona. <laughs> I gotta look into see what these alpha wave waves are. All right, check this out. New research examined the role of these alpha vivin waves in the intense heating of the solar corona. A new study delved into the mysterious heating of the solar corona, significantly hotter than the sun's surface, through the lens of kinetic alpha vivin waves. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm going to Alpha Vivin. This is a big mystery to them. Space is saturated with particles. We scrub through it. Case closed. Okay, so here's the statement. The corona, the solar atmosphere, the atmosphere just like we have around our planet, is an enigmatic region surrounding our home star extends far beyond the visible disk of the sun, stretching 8 million kilometers above the sun's surface. Yet the corona is also characterized by extraordinarily high temperatures, a mystery that has captivated astro astrophysicists for nearly 70 years. And it is as simple as this. The sun is scrubbing and spinning and being ripped through the solar system and through the galaxy. And as it does, it interacts with all these particles that are in front of them, pushing them out of the way, which creates this zone of interaction, which is the corona, which is millions of degrees, and it's 10,000 here. We have exactly the same situation, no difference whatsoever. We're 100 degrees here, we're smaller, so we, out here, it's scrubbing like crazy, and it's 3,000 degrees almost out here. Nobody can explain that. And that creates our global warming. Global warming is a result of the ionosphere scrubbing through space. I just did this video on this 20 minutes ago. I don't even think it's up yet. You know, I, I, I don't want to be critical, but I'm going to tell you right now, all they're doing is saying what I said, is we're scrubbing through the particles in space. But they were making it sound so convoluted that you've got to be a genius to figure it out. They're saying these Kinefnon waves, or whatever you call them, abundant throughout the, throughout the universe, are oscillations of the ions and magnetic field as they move through the solar plasma. Everything, though, every, it's not just solar plasma, it's everywhere in space. The waves are formed by motions in the photosphere, the sun's outer shell that radiates visible light. It's because it's plowing through everything in space. Yes, call it whatever you want to call it. It's the corona that scrubs everything in front of it. It has to plow through it. And we have to do the same thing with our atmosphere as well. That's why we have almost 3,000 degrees out in our ionosphere. Who can explain that? You can't explain that using using the theories from anybody until you understand dipole electron flow theory because our atmosphere is a dipole don't forget here's 10,000 degrees millions here 100 degrees about 3,000 out here now let's take a look at the temperature range here it is right here this is the ionosphere well what does ion mean ion means electrons just electrons they're basically floating free electrons, which they are. This is saturated with electrons. Just below it is the dark particles, and that is colder than hell. Listen to this. Ionosphere is 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's 2,700 or so, I think, um, Fahrenheit. Right below it, it is a borderline between it. This is a dipole. Right below, it's minus 80 degrees, 112 degrees difference. Nobody can explain that difference. Nobody. Nobody. I know what's happening. This whole thing is scrubbing through space. And as this, our electrons out here scrub through the, all of this stuff that's out here, it creates this scrub to scrub, I call it push to shove, which creates a huge glowing you know, high temperature area of nothing but electrons. And they are pushed down below into a range here. 
Now, what happens after that? That's a dipole. Well, then you get another hot zone because this is a hot zone, cold zone, hot zone, cold zone. The Earth is basically a cold zone, but it is warming up. Normally, light would come down hot, cold, hot, cold, and it would be fairly consistent. But now we've pumped up our atmosphere so big that it's just too hot and too cold and too hot. And now the Earth is not going to be cold anymore. The Earth's temperatures are, are growing. The land masses are getting hotter. The oceans are getting hotter. All the waters are getting hotter. We're absorbing all that energy that we have forced into the Earth by expanding the atmosphere of our Earth, making the scrub so much more intense that it is just heating like hell. And that's why we have all this turmoil and hurricanes and floods and gigantic ice coming out of the sky and global warming and patterns and fires and dry, oh, it's a mess. And that's because we have taken all the solid things from under the earth that were just sitting there just being laying around and we took them out and expanded them thousands and thousands of times into our atmosphere. That's what greenhouse gases are. It's just, carbon is very little other than the fact that it's part of combustion. All right, you can take all the carbon you want out. It doesn't matter. Once you expand the atmosphere, you're done. And that's where we are, where we are done. Okay, so am I just complaining? No, I am complaining because we're not taking advantage of what we might be able to take advantage of. I'm not certain of this, but in our light experiments, we were able to accelerate light. That's obviously acceleration. Einstein was very, very wrong about everything he said. That's acceleration. Light is the particle. That is the particle. And when it hits here, it divides. It becomes a sterile muon and electron showers. Those showers are what we want to put into a battery. If we could take those showers, put it into a battery, we are golden. And how would we do that? We would do it just like this. Coming through the Venturi, the black stays this side, the showers come through, we just push them down into a battery. Simple as that. You could carry it around in a box this size and, and power probably a car. This is what they did at Lawrence Livermore. These are the electron showers. Very low energy here, then very extremely high energy here because they are separated from their counterparts. The counterparts, the muons, stay back this way. You see here, here? These are the muons. They stay away. The electrons come through in a low energy and they go up to an extremely high energy in the cones, in the showers. We did this. There's no reason we, well, I know, I, I, let me put it this way. I don't know, but if it doesn't get tested, we will never know. All we need to do is put a harvester there, tune an extremely good Venturi, and here now this is going to take some money it's going to take a, a, some people to engineer it and set it up we did this just very simply and it was an abs just an accident done by rod warren in australia and um and it, it well let me show you all right so here's how this happened again this is hopefully we could get some energy out of something like this all we want to do is get that white energy all by itself and this is what we did coming into this it was a particle, all right? It was this particle right here. You see that? They look just like that, a black and a white coming in. And they are in this light wave, it's a particle. The wave is the magnetic field. As it accelerates, the field literally gets, the wave, the particle gets sucked literally directly out of the field. And here is where the black part stays this side and the white part goes this way. Just the exa exact same thing that Lawrence Livermore did, only they did it differently. We did it with just ch cheap, simple light. All right, this is a Higgs field. Now, what happened when it hit the Venturi? Here it is right here. The black, as I showed you, was attached to the white. It separated. That's called fission. It, it, it created the fission here. So the black stayed this way. The white squirted through, and then the black came back together. That's fusion. This is it from the big guys. 
they say a muon and an electron neutrino together at high energy, which I showed you accelerated, comes in and hits wa heavy water. The muon goes all by itself and the electron turns into a shower. Precisely what you see here. Exactly. There's no question this is it. We came in with light, the smallest particles there is. The black stayed, the white went through because the venturi is so small and it's, it, all the fields have to crush in and the black just keeps slapping it through and squirting it out here. I, I can't see any reason that we couldn't put some kind of a harvester here. There's something right here. And let it hit there and suck all that energy right down into a battery. I don't see any reason that that shouldn't be able to happen. This is, there's no energy, there's no weight here and all energy. All the weight is staying back here. That's the difference between a muon and an electron neutrino. This has all the energy and no weight, this white one. This has all the weight and all it does is attract the white. They stick together like unbelievable. That's the strong atomic force. To strip them apart is very, very difficult except through the venturi. They just squirt apart. And don't forget, none of this would work with the standard model. It doesn't work. So they just dismiss it. No, it doesn't, won't work because you're not working with the standard model. Of course I'm not because the standard model is wrong. This is what a proton is. A proton is not one big ball like this of positiveness. Absolutely not. It is 1823 or so dipoles uh, each one of these is a little tiny magnet, and they stick together, and at 1823, for some reason, they become stable. 1824, you add one more, and it becomes neutral. 1823 is stable, but it's charged. Eight, two, uh, uneven numbers are charged. They want to add one more to make it stable, or they want to give one up, or, you know, associate to some other molecule to use up that extra electron. Or they want to bring an extra electron in to become neutral. That's why. Anyway, it, very, very simple. It's up on the web. It's called dipoleelectronflood.com. And that is my, my model. I've had it for many, many years since I got out of the Army, 1970. So, and now I can prove it, showing the, uh, the, um, the pictures. The pictures now prove the story. It's not like I have to, you know, there it is right here. And light is light. It's the smallest particle there is. And there's light coming through, not accelerated much yet, just starting to. Here it is extremely accelerated. There it does split fission, fusion. Here's the Higgs fields. This shows that it spins and slows down. That's the particle. And this one here, I don't know what that is. That's what I like to have some of the big guys talk to them about it. Because that's, that's a reverse particle. I know what it is. It's a reverse particle. But... <laughs> now, that's the new the dipole electron flood theory. It's only a flood, the only theory that works. It works for everything. It works for gravity. It works for dark energy, because that's the dark energy, a dark matter. It's right in the center of every single electron there is. Everything there is has dark matter in it. Even in the air, it's all dark matter. Is into every single atom. The, the core of every atom is dark matter. It's surrounded by white particles that bounce back at you so you see them. That's why you never saw inside to see the dark matter. It's really literally as simple as that. And what I'm getting from the top physicists is you're wrong, go away. Now, should we destroy the earth because I'm wrong, go away? If this could help? Lawrence Livermore understands this. This is Lawrence Livermore. It's not me. They're saying electron showers just so I'm showing you. And the muons stay back, just like I'm showing you. And what we want is these high-energy showers, just like I'm showing you. It comes in low energy, you go to high energy. What does that mean? You increase the energy. This is not hard to understand. But, but the people that are in charge, they don't want to hear about it. Stay away. Stand down. We're in charge. We can make this thing play out for another 100 years until we totally destroy it. Well, it, it won't take that long. But that's basically what's going on right now. I'm sorry, my friends. We need to get uh, this thing under control. And it's as simple as the fact that we are scrubbing through space. And as the more we burn, the more the expansion goes. The more the expansion, the hotter and I'm scrubbier and I, the more turmoil and all that stuff. And it's exactly what's happening. It's getting worse and worse and worse. I mean, it's getting terribly bad. So, 
and, and, and I don't see that this is such a big thing. That somebody should be able to at least look into this. Now, whether it will work, I don't know. But they're putting billions and billions and billions of dollars into just absolute nonsense. And they won't put a penny or even talk to me about this. This is very frustrating. All right, I love you all.